Yeah, it's said in, 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 in psychology and other areas that um, we all experience some degree of trauma, whether it's a feeling of abandonment or uh, um, uh, uh, some sort of grief that occurs. It slips in my mind right now, but there's three basic themes that, that uh, grief is surrounded that cause us uh, this traumatic experience that wounds us and we all have this basic wound now that we go forward with not fully understanding again what has caused it and it can be something major like a divorce or a death or something which would be seemingly minor like you know a, 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 a child in your class rejecting you know your valentine's day card <laughs> and, and a feeling of rejection uh, and, and the profound wound and course that it begins to take in your life and, and everything in between. And we, we also have to know how magnified our childhood is to us because it's still a new world for us that we haven't become accustomed to. So it, you know, what has a minor effect to you today would, would, would be major at such a young age because it's magnified. It's not, so it's all new experiences. So this is why clearly by the time we reach 13, we have had some form of this kind of betrayal or abandonment um, or, or, other, or other things that um, cause us to now feel loss. Or I, the grief, grief defined as when your dreams and illusions have been shattered. Right? Your dreams and illusions of what the world is like suddenly get shattered. Everybody experiences it by the time they're 13, and to one form or another. And that then begins to be how you, the theme, and that wound theme is how you begin to go forth in your life and respond from. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. And that, it makes me think of how you know, if everybody experiences that by age 13 or, or sooner, how relative it is, because, um, I think it was, uh, Tom Brady's wife, Giselle Bunchen wrote a book recently about how the struggles that she's gone through and how she felt like she didn't have the opportunity or she wasn't allowed to experience sort of you know, just her trauma, whatever, because of from the outside, how amazing her life would seem to other folks. Like, you know, she's financially stable. She's got a great marriage, kids, all that sort of stuff. But she felt like she wasn't entitled to feel that way because externally it would appear that she has, you know, the quote unquote perfect life. Yeah. Not every fruit shows its rot. And so, you know, some fruits and vegetables have a strong cover and looks fine, and you open it up and it's rotted on the inside. So uh, with her, you know, her external, hard, clear life of, of, of abundance and maybe even some privilege, um, my, you know, hid some of the rot that she finally spoke forth from. Uh, one does not affect the other as uh, in terms of shifting as much as you would think. And you, you, you work at building your bank account and your career. That doesn't necessarily mean you're touching upon any of whatever is not working or rotted inside of you on the inside. It would be like the proverbial hosing down the wrong house during a fire. Just because you're hosing down a house doesn't mean that you're accomplishing shutting off the fire in the other house in the corner. Because there are two different locations, different places. Two, the problems are in two different places. Again, this this silly belief that the external represents everything that is, it, is is what causes this type of misunderstanding. Now, imagine raising children to understand that both exist, and you can have things looking very pleasant externally and it not be that great externally, or feel so wonderful and solid internally while things aren't quite pretty externally, right? You know, uh, that happens too. Some people just are fine with that. They, they, they sit inside themselves and they choose to take it as it is. They choose to put themselves in situations to help others in their hardships when they build that. But it's much more difficult to do it in reverse. 
I can take the inter that's the difference. I can take this internal shift and growth and strength from within and affect my external much more effectively than I could throw money at my internal wounds. It's 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 just gonna bounce off. But again, we're raised to focus more on external accomplishment before we go internal. But nothing's more powerful or more effective, I should say, than building internally. If you want to affect the external, it's a much faster process. And so I saw that as a kid and realized that's what I want to invest in. I want to invest in my internal because I know it'll make my external more livable and, 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 and happier and peaceful. And so when I come upon another area of wound that let's say has been hidden from me or I go deep in meditation and find other areas that are now very deep rooted that are fundamental primal and I need to deal with it um, yeah it helps greatly if my external is at peace and, and, and taking care of itself so I can go in and do that work again it supports each other so I also understood I couldn't give up everything external I still have to get my education and take care of other things but always with the eye of putting more internally than externally because I understood that it's easier to balance that way than the other way around so I got Bill Gates money but now I got to deal with you know or, or Steve Jobs money and I, but I got to deal with the fact that I was adopted abandoned who knows if that was part of what caused him to die so young